Welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. Please visit iTunes, Stitcher, or EmmettMuckles.com to listen to all the episodes for free. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. There's only two of us left. And my daddy's getting old. Remember, everyone, today is the day that was given to you. What you do with it is yours because you have free will. We are one of the only creatures I can think of because we don't know any outside this rock that has free will. And what does free will implicate to you? It implicates that you can predict the future. You might say, how is that? Because you can think about tomorrow and you can project what you want to be. It is your job to make it to that destination. Hence, you can predict the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome my new friend, Alex Sanfilippo. How are you, Glad sir? To be here, man. I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Great intro, man. I love that. I know we were just kicking it before. We we're both in a good mood. We got those endorphins up. We had that workout. So, you know, you've been a busy cat. You I got, have got a podcast. You know, got some businesses. You're helping people out. But let's start from the beginning. What brought you to now? What brought me to now, man? I could start from the time I was like five when I first had a memory, or I could start a little bit further. I mean, I, I mean, start anywhere. So you can go back to the womb. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I don't remember anything. Like people are like, "Don't you remember like when you're a real little kid?" And I'm like, "Man, I don't have any memories before I was like ten. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about." Well, um, I grew up in Detroit, so everything before like the age of like ten was trauma. So, nah, oh, I'm man. <laughs> <laughs> man i'll start when i was uh let, let's start when i was 12 let's because go when you're 12 i found something i was i was good at right. um here's the thing about me this is kind of sad but kind of funny too um i realized at a really young age that i wasn't good at school wasn't good at sports for some reason i couldn't figure out how to play guitar i've got them on the wall now but you know i can play them now but i couldn't figure it out right and i wasn't good at video games i'm like dude this is the most awkward place to be like what on earth am i actually good at and uh, I discovered when I started selling used golf balls to golfers that would hit them in the lakes, I'd sell them right back to them. I'd get them out and sell it to them. I was like, you know, what? I'm actually good at business. Did you have that that long yes. stick thing? That, I, I know that what to call it, the, the thing. With the little <laughs> cup on the end? Yes. It's all you needed. It's like 20 feet. I could like stand on a bridge and be like, there's a golf ball. I will get that one and I will sell it to somebody. So and, did you, uh, you just washed them off, made them, polished them yeah. up and... Yep. That's pretty much it. We actually, there was a few of us in the neighborhood. So I have three younger brothers. So, um, one of them was helping me. The other were just too young at this point. So t one was helping me and my neighbor next door. Um, and the three of us, we'd go out and grab them and then we'd clean them up real nice. And then after that, we'd, uh, kind of categorize them because we figured out which ones are worth more. There's a, you know, we were some all for 25 cents at first. We found out there's this ball called a pro V one. And if we had them for 25 cents, someone buy the whole you know, we have a case of them, like giant. Yeah. They were like, I'll take the whole case. And I was like, okay, we have to figure out how to find out how to price this stuff because apparently these are worth more than the rest. So we made that discovery real quick. So, you know, that's actually um, a good thing. I'm glad that you're in it. And I wish kids could hear this, especially mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because the hustle is real. And sometimes you won't get into the hustle unless, A, you need it. Like I can't get shoes for school or I want this game. All my friends have it, but my parents just can't afford it. So I have to find, you know, sometimes you need a motivation. Your motivation is you were on a vision quest. You were trying to yeah. find out what it is that is your calling, which is awesome because this is what I always say to people. Just go out and try stuff. Go try to fail. Right. Man. I mean, I think that that really like, billionaire lifestyle talk about someone who anyone who's a billionaire has failed more times than probably the, than any of us really i mean that is something that is just truth any one time i've ever met someone who's like really successful financially like oh we well, didn't see the 20 companies that did before this one that didn't work at all <laughs> right you know but it's like a self-discovery thing they're getting out there and just just going after it and I, I couldn't agree anymore with that i mean younger generations i think we're so afraid to fail or to look bad 
in front of others or, you know, our families or whoever's maybe put us down before that we're not willing to actually try anything that we could fail or fail in an epic way, if you will. It's, it's kind of sad to see how it's changed, actually. So are you um, Gen X or Gen Z? No, Millen- millennial? millennial is Gen millennial. X. Okay, I, I can't even remember. I, I, I'm one. I'm millennial. Whatever one that is, which is true to a millennial, right? I don't care about anyone else. I'm like, I don't know. You know, I'm just kidding. You know, I, I feel you though because I, I understand it because I raised millennials. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and so I get it. And there's different variations of it. I understand because um, the way my children grew up was very different than the way I grew up which is very different than the way my parents grew up. And I keep seeing this thing on Facebook when they talk about kids. They say, um, you can't raise your kids like you were raised because the time is different. Hmm. I mean, like we had a phone on the wall with a really long cord. Right. We had three television stations and my TV was about as big as my computer. is. (laughs) (laughs) You know, versus my daughter. When my daughter was like two years old, she was playing on the computer, learning how to use a mouse. Right. It's a very different world. And, you know, but you found your way. So you started off with golf balls. Every day you were hustling. You were Rick Ross and them, them golf balls. That's a hit, man. That is, that is all. Yeah. You know what? I actually really, I, I liked it. I liked the idea of building a business. So like I was, um, I was kind of getting creative with how we'd also market to golfers. We figured out like the seventh tee box was like the perfect spot to be because that's when they started thinking am i going to run out of golf balls because i ever hit four <laughs> in the water and i didn't bring more than six right so you'd be like that's where we get the sales so you know we started figuring those things out and i just learned that i loved it and so obviously i didn't end at that i think i stopped at like 14 or 13 whenever whenever you weren't cute anymore you know and then it's like this kid's just trying to like rip us off and then yeah. apparently i had to retire um so but you're a nice uh, looking I, young man i mean Eddie, they, thank you they didn't they wouldn't say like hey you're a nice looking young man uh no you know i'll that's this is not gonna sound right. This isn't gonna sound right. It wasn't gonna I mean, sound I, I right. I think you need to backtrack a little bit yeah, on this. One. I'm not I'm not gonna even go there. So. <laughs> anyway, so going going off of that, Emo is actually funny that you do mention that though. Um uh, a lot of the the older guys they just be like, Whatever, I'm not buying golf balls. And they're like they'd be like, Give me some for free, and we'd be like, No, and they'd like drive off and they'd always make us really upset. But their wives were like the group behind them and they'd be like, Just take our money, we don't want anything. I was always like, uh, cute kids, here we go. We got it, you know? Wait so. a minute, you're about 14, and those moms were looking at you. I see how it is. I see how you are. <laughs> you're still bringing it back. We got to move. You know, okay, so. I'm, in that, I'm in that great, gregarious mood right now, and you brought that energy, so we're just going to have fun, and we're going to talk about how awesome you are. That is it. I love it. Uh, that sounds great. So anyway, from this age, I'm going to move us out of this topic at least because I didn't end there. I um at 16. Yeah, you're laughing again. I know it. Um, at 16, I actually uh, had the opportunity to work with a realtor that was wanting to design a virtual tour inside of a home. So it was like a 365 degree spinning. Yeah. You know, the picture you can kind of look at the roof and you can spin around. Now it's very common. Back then it wasn't. We actually came up with the technology for it. So it was me and a group of people, like I was 16 and like another guy was, I had two other guys working with me that were the same age. They just really knew computers well. We were like the, the photographer, the, like the, the guy who actually was the realtor, yeah. he had the idea for it. He kind of had the vision. We were like, oh, I think that we can actually do this. We kind of figure out how to take two separate pictures with a fisheye lens to make it look like it was 365. Oh. We'd stitch them together. It was really interesting. So, so you had coders that. too, right? Excuse me? You had coders too to work on the back end stuff. Yes. Yep. That's adventurous. I mean, because now you're learning management skills. Now you're learning to, to bring people into oh, your, yeah. your, your fray. And it's not always wor- easy working with other people. So and you were 16 at the time? I was 16. And by the time I was 17, we, I had a team. So it was me and two, two other editors. I was like the lead editor, if you will, and four photographers that go out and get the pictures. And then we partnered up with um, different realtors and agencies that would actually buy the, the, the service from us. Wow. Um, it was really interesting. And then the crazy thing happened that this was short lived because um, I learned a ton about management because at first I realized I wasn't making any money because I was paying other people. I'm like, wait a second, (laughs) profit margin and something for me at the end of the day, you know? So with that, you know, and I'm going to bring this to you from a different point of view. A couple of months ago, I was watching, I was on Twitter and um, I saw this interesting thing with Killer Mike, T.I. and David Banner. And this was aimed at the African-American community. 
and they were saying, hey, you know, we really have to build our communities up. You guys need to start businesses and blah, blah, blah. But they were Hmm. really promoting this idea of localized business, focusing it on the 20 minute neighborhood, right? Which I'm all for. And I was gung ho. I was like, whoa, that's hot. Let's get it going. But then a day later, I was riding in my car and I thought about it. I was like, I can, you know, say what you must do, but then do these guys know what profit and loss is? Do they know what the insurances are for the employees? Are they on 1099 people? What about insurances for business? You know, all these things come into play. How did you start to acclimate to those things as well? Well, thankfully, first off, and I love my parents, I'm thankful for them. I lived under their roof. So when I wasn't making money, I didn't have many bills to pay at that point, if that makes sense. I was paying my my gas bill and my car insurance. And when I couldn't do that, I was like, okay, there is definitely a problem here. Like I have to figure this out. So I had to adjust prices and things like that. But yeah, I didn't know that going into it. And if I was living alone or was a little bit older, like it wouldn't have worked. I would have to shut the whole thing down right there. Um, I'm very thankful to have the upbringing I did because I was just, I was young and sure, it sounds super ambitious and smart. It comes down to it. I was just a kid that was in the right spot at the right time that knew how to use a computer, you know, yeah. like, and, uh, and, but I had to figure that stuff out, but you're absolutely right. Like a lot of people like get out there and just start something, which is, can be a good idea, but you have to, you have to know a little bit more than just that. Like yeah. you really do have to have an idea on uh, like how money works, you know, like how you can actually bring it in and, and keep some of it. Right. So when you, when was the f- point that you said, you know, um, I have to really go the route of understanding the back end of the business, which is, um, I have, am, am I going to be a corporation? Am I going to be a sole proprietor? Um, uh, what is it going to be my structure? Uh, what is going to be my structure moving forward in case, am I going to do multiple things? Because you're a young guy yeah, and, yeah. and young guys and young women and young people, attention span shifts rather rapidly. So Mm -hmm. you see opportunities far easier than a lot of other people do. And you have the propensity to go in that direction. So you've got this one business, you might see another opportunity, especially when you're in business, you see opportunities more often than like just somebody who works a day job. Um, When did you ever start to think about, all right, I need to structure this. So I'm gonna put all my stuff on my umbrella or I'm gonna do separate things or what? Yeah. You know, here's the thing I started to, and talking about diversification, I started thinking, you know what? I really enjoyed looking at these houses. Like I was behind a computer, but I'd ask the people who were like taking the pictures. I'm like, Hey, why'd they, why'd they have that extra room there? Did somebody add that later and start asking a lot of questions? Kind of fell in love with the idea of real estate investing. So at 18, I, I bought my first property and I was, I was psyched to get into it. I used it as a rental property. And this is when I was like really learning all this, but here was the big problem. That was 2000. I think I bought it in 2006 and then 2007 was the crash or it was 2007, 2008, oh, one of those. Yeah. Anyway, so like I, I went from being a kid that was like 18 and I was like, man, I have a rental property. I'm making like passive income now, like understanding what this is to, oh, I have a ton of debt now, like a lot of <laughs> debt and I'm in a really bad place. So basically what I did at that point, that business, I had to pass it off to the, the partner that we were working with. The, the person was actually the realtor and I just kind of, I, I sold my part of it for next to nothing and kind of passed it off to that person. At that point, I, I, I needed a new direction. I didn't have any money. And, uh, I was, I was in a really bad spot at that point, but that's really where I, like in that moment is when I was like learning a lot about this. It's like when I kind of got my head wrapped around it and, uh, I had to take a complete shift. So I looked for an industry that was more bulletproof, if you will. Yeah. And I, I'm very fortunate again, I have, I have a great family. My dad was in aerospace at the time and he was the CEO of a company that i was like, Hey, you guys are still doing pretty good. Can I get a job? My dad being the great loving man that he is goes, no, but you can come apply if you want to. I was like, that, okay. that, now that's real. That, it is real. That's Absolutely. A good, that's a good dad. It is. Yes. Because, and I, I'll tell you if you were my, my kid, why that's a good thing. Because now you might think I got to apply. Well, if they don't hire me, what am I going to do? You got to have a plan B. I I got this other question for where's Alicia. (laughs) Alicia's in the other room. I can see her right now. We're, you know, we're all quarantined. I can see her right over there. I thought she was going to be on here too. (laughs) Did you really? No, I didn't. Oh, I'm so sorry if I missed that. No, I'm just messing with you. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Alicia, you're getting called out on a podcast right now. (laughs) (laughs) No, but, but let's, let's, let's keep moving because you know, you have, um, started 
a brand community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about understanding that as because brand has become this cliche word. It has definitely. You know, you have to be a brand. You know, my Mm -hmm. brand is. I'm like, I don't have a brand. I'm just me. And if you like, (laughs) and if you like me, then that's cool. If you don't, because people change things change mm-hmm. and you can try to stick to something that does that does isn't you anymore but tell me about what it is and how you came up with this idea and what your focus is yeah we just fast forward basically 10 years from that time anyway long story short the aerospace thing i got a job i got hired part-time <laughs> receiving guy um because that's all the experience i had <laughs> i ended up working way up up in the company and uh my, my my dad ended up selling it years later so it's it's a public company it's still around and I ended up working all the way to the senior leader level. And throughout that time, I actually started getting into some coaching outside of it because I got really big into the processes and profit margin side of things, yeah. which, you know, it's kind of like what I was learning a lot about. So I really, I understood how to make a company profitable and do it efficiently. And that's really what they had me focusing on. So I started doing some outside coaching and I, I, I loved it at, at first, especially because I got to help people. I was like really getting hands on. And at the end of the day, I love to add value. There's something on one of these boards behind me here that says, uh, focus on being a person of value, not a person of profit. And I live by that. My job is I want to be a person of, of, of value to everybody I meet and profit. If it comes later, great. Or if it comes along the way, great. But I have to be a person of value first. But I realized like a huge problem when I was doing this. I was coaching and I had to raise rates because I have to pay bills, but it was yeah. time for dollars. And I realized that I was helping companies more than I was helping individuals. So people are really like, not that I don't care about companies, but I really care about the person who's <laughs> new and struggling, right? Like yeah. I was, that's what I wanted to help. And they, they couldn't afford it. It made sense. I'm like, yeah, you don't have $400 for a budget to get a coaching session. Like that doesn't make sense. Like you're just getting started. You want to know what kind of logo you should make, you know? That's true. And, that's Yeah. True. And that's, true. that's where creating a brand was, was born. Cause I was like, you know what? I want to do a podcast. And I also want to have an online community as a free resource for people just to join and let's collaborate and help one another. And that's, that's what we've created. So the creating a brand community and the creating a brand podcast are both free resources I have for people where I engage as much as I can and other people do as well. We're just helping each other make those right moves. Yeah. I'm thinking you, you are you, thinking, yeah, you, you <laughs> see those little curls of smoke coming off. That's wood. Yeah. burning. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk after the show. Anyway. All right. All right. <laughs> so, when did you start this? When, when, when did you, when did you put it all together? The creating a brand.com. Yep. Um, July 2nd is when July 2nd, 2019. And you know, when you start with something, you have this grandiose idea. Oh, of course. It's beautiful. Are you kidding? And then you start building it and you're like, mm, I might have to do that later. You're like, oh. this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Yeah. This was a dumb idea, Alex. What were you thinking? <laughs> you know, my Mona Lisa turns into like a scrap <laughs> painting. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> it's true. It's it's true. So what did you go through with that? You know, because those great ideas come and before you actually get them into the fray, they are born in the ether of the mind and the mind is so expansive. You see you see already complete. Yes. You see the journey that you don't even see the journey. You just see the destination. You see the buildings of gold and you see the water <laughs> and you see everything. You don't realize that you got to walk 40,000 miles to get there. So what was that walk like for you? Damn it. Something tells me you have some experience with what we're talking about. I don't know why, but you visualize that very well. <laughs> I've, you know, I've been around a time or seven. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. I mean, it's, for me, yeah, it goes back to it. I had the, the most beautiful idea in my head of what it would be. And um, at first, I think that many of us struggle with this and it's something I truly struggle with was the willingness to adjust. Yeah. Like I saw that vision. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to change anything. Like I'll get there if I just keep on pursuing hard enough. But here's the thing. And here's the problem with ideas, really. Many of us, we have these ideas we want to act on. And that's what I had. I had an idea I want to act on. But an idea isn't a solution that people are always looking for. And at the end of the day, if you're going to start a business, it has to be a solution to somebody's problem, not just an idea that you have. And that's where that's really what separates something that's going to be successful and not. That was an awesome statement because, you know, we often have these things and I just had one. I have a friend who's um, a good business friend and a good personal friend. As a matter of fact, she and I moved like I moved from Detroit towards Chicago and like two months Within that time, she moved to Chicago. Just 
that's how life is. And we always bounce these ideas off each other. And she just tore this idea apart, <laughs> just <laughs> ripped it to shreds. <laughs> that's a was, true friend right there, though. But she was like, but you could probably make it work. Hmm. She's like, you're just not going to make a lot of money at it. <laughs> 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 so you, you've gotten this. Now, I'm going to ask you this. Mm-hmm. Um, related to creating a brand.com, who's your perfect customer? My perfect customer is that person that is early in their entrepreneurship stage. Doesn't mean there's no age necessarily of them, actually their physical age, but more so their stage of entrepreneurism. Like, are they really early in that stage? So I'm looking for that person that's like really struggling to make that first or next early step. And that's who I find I help the most. I'm not the smartest person in the world. I'll be the first to admit it. But if you're in your really early stages and you're having these questions that we're talking about right now, like... I can help answer those. I can help point you in the right direction to, to get answers for those. And that's like, that's my ideal. That's my avatar, as I call them. I mean, I even named my avatar. His name's Adam. I mean, I can get really specific, but I had this person figured out, like, this is who I know I can help. And yes, I've tweaked him over time. Initially, he was different than he is now. So, but uh, it, that's who I'm helping. Those people that need that first or next step in their business, they want to do it quickly and they want to save money in the process. And I'm helping those people out. Here's what I need you to do, though. I need you to introduce me to Jesse Cole. Because anybody who can put on a yellow ruffle tuxedo. Jesse Cole, that guy is the man. He's one of my heroes. Love that guy. I mean, I just looked at his picture. I was like, you know, I would buy him a drink. <laughs> yeah, man, he is a fast. And, like, he'd be great on this podcast. I need to, I'll connect the two of you. <laughs> he's, he's awesome, man. Like, he, he is, he's got a lot more energy than I do. So just be ready. <laughs> That's I, all I'm going to say. I, I can believe it. So let me, how did you attract people to this? What was, you know, usually you can, if you build it, they will come is not a true statement. It is not a true statement. You not have, at all. You know, and one of the things in, in this um, arena of time on this planet is it's an ocean out there and we are all drops and drops can seem like another drop unless something very specific or something attracts you to it. So what was your building block to where you say, hey this is here for you. Yeah. It's not as sexy as everyone wants to hear. I hope, I hope everyone's okay with that. But, um, I focused on helping one person every day. And I just told myself, if I can help one person today, find the answer that they need, find the solution that they need, can do it in a way that will save them time and save them money. Then that's a win. And I'll check that off this day and I'll do it again the next day. Awesome. And that's truthfully, that's what I've done every single day. And, and that's, that's worked for me. Like, some days, like especially early on, there was zero growth and I'd find someone to help. And it was like, oh, I hope that really helped them. And then some days it was like, I could help two or three people. It was really adding that value. But in the, the day, I'd go to bed happy if I knew I could check off saying, you know what? I, I helped one person today, help them actually achieve something they wanted to do. Um, th- and that's the way I've built it. It's not f- like sexy or fun. I wasn't like, here is the perfect marketing funnel. Like you'll have 10,000 customers tomorrow. I just reached out one-on-one and saw someone, Hey, you have a need. I can maybe help you with that. And if I can help you with that, great. And let's see what we can do from there. And now, that's the way I've, I've done it. Is there a cost for this? No, uh, uh-uh, no. That's what, you know, because I'm on your website right now and I'm like, all right, show me the money. Where's the money? There's got, be, <laughs> there's got, because you know, we're in that age and this ultimately upsets me most of the time is I'm being sold to constantly mm. give me, I have this, but give me your money for, or I'm being baited. I'm being, my time is being wasted versus hey la 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 you've seen the youtube ads they got all this verbiage and you're waiting when it could have been like hey i can help you start your podcast it's going to cost you 7.99 a month ding done i'm moving on so when you do things online you're expecting for it to be a cost so mm-hmm. and i'm going to tell you guys here's what he has free courses launch a successful podcast Blogging like a pro, getting the most out of conferences. And I'm a king at that because I am a social diva. <laughs> I can I can tell. <laughs> Not the words I was going to use, but perfect. A Damn. social diva. <laughs> I'm a, well, my wife says I'm a diva. I don't know what that means, but you know how it is. How, how to start a WordPress blog. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. I've been a WordPress guy since 2004. It's mm, much better than it used that. to be. Come on. But they used to crash and they would crash hard. So sometimes really? you need to know f- how to do it from start. 
uh, professional leadership series. And I think that's important for everyone. And there are many more. And you say, all of this is free. <laughs> Here's the here's the thing that actually so those those six there's six courses there at the top that are completely free and and truthfully completely free because people um I think a lot of marketers these days that we talk about stuff for free but we ask for your email address first yeah and that's that's not free you're still asking for something so those they don't even require a login like literally you click on that page and the whole course is right there like I laid it out as nicely as I could on a WordPress page so it's not like fancy transitions and stuff like that but it's all there and it's completely free. And that's just something that I, I believe in doing. Like I actually want to add that value and give it away truly for free. I had somebody who became a customer of mine just a couple of weeks ago. He said, Alex, you want to know when you like one me as a customer. I was like, when he goes, when I went to your website and I saw that you were really giving something away for free. He goes, I knew I was going to buy anything you had after that. I was like, Oh, okay. You know, this makes perfect sense because as I scroll down, you have free, but just as you have free, you have just as many things that may cost uh, mm -hmm. or have which makes sense because you incur costs at the very minimum. You yes. have to maintain what you are putting forth. So that makes sense. And this also, is, if I don't eat, I die. And if I die, I can't help you anymore. Oh, so you can get by <laughs> with osmosis, <laughs> <laughs> but this is pretty cool because it's, it's got some, it has a good lead up and a well-rounded understanding for what you need in today's society, especially with like SEO and Instagram, and it's only going to grow. Now let's do it like this. What is your trajectory in your mind? Let's scrap 2020. <laughs> okay. All right. So I usually say 18 months, but let's say 18 months from like December. Okay. What do you see it being from that point from like a monetary perspective just no just in your mind for it to be a successful what would make you happy because i don't always say money because you you need what okay, you need yeah and i always this is my thing regarding money people go you can be six figure i don't need six figures a because i don't spend like you know i spend half of less than half of six figures and I get by great. So everything right. else is a bonus. So why do I need six figures? Yeah, that's it's, just me. And, hey, little side note there. I want to go along with that because this is so true. I had a friend who was, um, I'm not gonna call this person out. So I met somebody randomly who I don't know, um, just randomly. That's what I'm, that's what I'm gonna say it. That's they were good. talking about how they, they could never save any money at all. They're like, I can't, I can't seem to do it. If I could just make six figures, I'd be fine. I immediately told him like, no, you wouldn't. I'm like, you would find a way to spend that too. Like you build the discipline with what you have, like be faithful, what you have, and you'll be given more. Like I, I fully believe in that. And if you can't control where you are today, what makes you think if someone gives you more, you're gonna be able to control yourself then. Like that's not how it works. Like you'll be like, well, I'll get a nicer car and I'll go to nicer restaurants yep. and you realize you're spending the same amount of money. It's like, if you can figure out a lower level, like here's the deal. All, all of us need a lot less than we think we need. And that's just <laughs> fact, right? That's fact. You know, um, I was doing something. Somebody sent me to Best Buy. Hey, Amy, go get me this. I'm like, cool. I'll get that for you. Now, 10, 15 years ago, if I wanted Best Buy, I would have wanted everything. <laughs> I've just been touching stuff and be like, oh. <laughs> oh, don't touch anything anymore. We yeah. can't do that anymore. Right, don't touch anything. Just, buy this, is, this is a while ago. This is like a month and a half ago. And I went in and I got the thing and I was going out to my car and I was, and it struck me. Nothing. I they had nothing that I wanted or needed. I, I mean, like I'm complete for the most part. Like 15 years ago, like I need that. I need those headphones and I need that Bluetooth cord and I need that. And, oh, they got the biggest TV ever. I don't need that, you know. And it's right. all about finding that to be your own star in your life. Hmm. So. Back to the question, right? 18 months from 2021, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the vision for for that within that actual time frame, I'd say by the end of 2021, the goal is to be helping 4,000 people in the community. Um, so to reach that number, so 4,000 people. And then again, people, you know, I do make money because people buy my premium courses and those are within the community. Or we do like master classes and things like that. We're able to actually bring in a professional that can talk on a topic that might interest people. So we, there's income that we drive from that. But the 
the majority of the mass majority of the community is completely free. And that's the idea behind it. I'd like to have 4,000 people in there that are active and, and helping each other out. And at the pace we're going, we'll hit those projected numbers. So when will you be having the creating a brand conference? I, I mean, I literally this, see, I'm looking at it and then that's what's missing. I mean, I don't want to say Wow, I, I haven't thought about that at all. Like literally, this is the first time that's even brought up. I don't, I, and I don't want to seem presumptuous and I don't want to seem like, you know, you know, the word I used earlier describing some people right. I know. Yeah. I don't want to be that guy, but literally I'm looking at it and that's, that, that's my personal expectation is yeah. I'm looking at this. I'm like, that is perfect because all these are breakout sessions. Wow. Say thank my, you. Yeah, Emmett. my wheel spinning, man. Say thank like, you, Emmett. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Emmett. Wow, <laughs> I had I hadn't even considered that actually. That's that's interesting. That's cool. I mean, I like that. That'd be a cool idea. We'll talk later. Anyway, we will. <laughs> so, so, with the podcast, is it a solo? Is it a interview? Is it a mix of both? It's it's all interview um, for right now. We might add a second day at some point in the future, but for now, it's it's all interview. And I consider it to be more of a master class. So I find subject matter experts that are. Um, that my community is asking for. So topics that are really important to them. So recently we had somebody on, I, I just used this example the other day, actually, because um, I had just recorded, but I talked to somebody about um, becoming a conference speaker. Like how can I get booked to speak at conferences? And um, he shared five steps for how to become a conference speaker. Like, and he's, he's a keynote speaker. I think his um, book is called the successful speaker or something like that. <laughs> but um, anyway, he just talked through the five points and we just go through it like real quick. So there's no like, it's different than most podcasts because there's no like real introduction necessarily. Like we don't ask anything about his background. It's straight into give us the five points and we're going to be done. And that's just what the audience that I'm serving. Um, I love podcasts like this. Absolutely love, like it's an honor to be on this because this is what I enjoy doing. Um, but my audience has responded very well to these master class style episodes, but like, okay, we want to talk about video. How do we use video on our website? And just here's three steps for making great videos for your website. And that's, that's the whole flow of that podcast. Well, awesome. So what is the one thing um, that you want people to know about you? Um, Man, the one thing. You really put me on the spot with that one, huh? Yeah. You know, like, it's just one thing that's got to... Uh, uh, just... <laughs> You're going to bust out your uh, bass guitar? No, 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 <laughs> okay. no, no, no. I was a DJ too, dude. <laughs> okay, all right. So, you know, uh, music is, music is the, are the quotes in my head. Gotcha. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Um, for me, it's movies, but I think it's just generation, right? Yeah. Well, like I grew up in front of a TV, unfortunately. No, I did too. But because I was so into music, as you see, and my wife is always looking at me as if I am an alien because I will finish her sentence with a lyric. With a lyric. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, like, I love that. No, it's just, I enjoy being me. <laughs> Love it. That's, that's, Hey, you're, you're the best person in the world at being you. Exactly. And I don't think he'd be as good at being anyone else. So that's perfect. No, no, no. So, that is the place to be. So, so back to the question. I'm so sorry. I like got us way off track there and that's, remind me of the question. That's okay. We're both got that, uh, that energy about it. So what's, I forgot the question. <laughs> oh, what's, what's one thing I want people to, to, to yes, know about me. I think is what yes, it was, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think that the one, probably the most important part about me kind of goes back to being that person of value. Um, I truly live by that. And um, I seek to serve people. And that's just like, for me, uh, I'm a Christian and my faith just, I find that it, for me, it demands that I that I serve others. And that's the way I live my life. Um, I don't necessarily agree with everything that goes on in, in, in any sort of religion, but I do follow the person of Jesus. And I do my best just to serve the way that I saw him serve people. And I literally live my life that way. And that's how I've defined it all. And everything I've done has been built off of that foundation. That's awesome. Well, you know what, man? I really want to thank you for being on the podcast. What's the name of the podcast? Yours. Creating a brand. And the website is creating a brand. So it's one big thing that you can find. If you need help, it is always there for you. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yeah, thanks, Emmett. I really appreciate you having me. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you what it was earlier in the in the podcast, what today was. But, you know, sometimes, especially in this time of COVID, first of all, let's um, make sure that SMG6, that means sanitize, 
wear your mask. Um, stay six feet apart and have gloves on. Those are all the things in SMG6. If you have to go out, abide by those so that we can get back to our new normal in the future because we need to see each other's faces. Because believe it or not, we're tribal people, we're communal people. Our psyche depends on us actually breathing the same air. It really does. You know, you need to be in proximity to humans. And I know this, and I know some of you are really feeling it. And I just want you to say, think, I want you to think about this. I want you to, when you go take your shower tonight, I want you to think that all that water that's hitting your body is just love. And then when you get out the shower, shake that love off because you'll have a mist of love that's covering you. Then I want you to go up to the mirror and I want you to look at yourself without the towel in your complete naked self. That is your God body. That is how you came to this place. That's how you got to be a trillionaire because the egg in your mom, sperm from your dad, met in a dance and was blessed by the cosmic force. Two to the power of 30, you were a billion cells. You were a billionaire before you got on the planet. Once you hit the planet, you began to expand like our universe to where you are a trillionaire. So, and if you don't think that anybody loves you, you remember love starts at home, which is you. So when you walk up to that mirror in your birthday suit, look closely at your face, see the moles on your face, see that little wiggly chicken arm thing, that squiggly thing by your tricep. Enjoy it. It's you. And look in your eye and I want you to mouth the words, I love you, because you will see it come back to you in the mirror. If you love that entity in the mirror, what's going to happen is it's going to create this field around you and it'll be picked up like radio waves and love will come into your life from other beings. Till next time, stay safe. Love you all. Peace.